All right, this is Joel at Earth Tools here, and we're going to walk through putting a set of tracks onto a walk behind tractor. The tractor we've got here today is a BCS 749. Uh, the same procedure is used on the BCS 852, 853, and also uh, essentially the same procedure for the Grillo G110 and G107. So we offer tracks in three different variations here at Earth Tools. We've got the steel tracks. Uh, which are reduction type tracks. Reduction type meaning that the, the reduction in ground speed available is about 50% with the tracks mounted because of the size of the drive sprocket here related to the size of the original rubber tire. Uh, we offer the steel tracks in a reduction track. We offer a rubber track in a reduction type track. And we also offer a rubber track in a high speed track which has a much larger drive sprocket. So it's not much of a reduction from the original ground speed of the rubber tires, only about a 10% reduction there. Obviously the tracks give much better traction, uh, much better uh, weight distribution in terms of keeping your PSI and compaction low and allow you to uh, do things with your tractor that you couldn't otherwise do. Anyway, so I've done a little work ahead of time here. I pulled the wheels off the tractor. I've got it up on a little jack here, but of course a cinder block under the belly of the tractor works as well as also, uh, I've already got one of the axle posts mounted to mount the track. I'm going I'm to mount this other one here in a minute. I wanted to point out that with your set of tracks, you will receive not only the axle posts, but an extra spacer. And people say, well, why do I need that? Well, that's for the Grillo tractors. The Grillos have a hub bolt that sticks out of the center of the axle a little bit, and it needs a little extra clearance so it doesn't hit here. So with the Grillo, you use that spacer behind it, and you also use the larger of the lug nut holes. There are two patterns here, one with smaller holes, one with larger holes. The larger for the Grillo, the smaller for the BCS, because BCS has smaller studs. Since we're putting this on a BCS, I'm gonna discard that. You can make an interesting, uh, you know, art thing out of it for your uh, hang on your rear view mirror. These are all on here. These are 17 millimeter heads on these nuts on the BCS. It would be 19 millimeter on the Grillo. I'm cheating. I'm using an electric impact. The handheld ratchets work just as well. Take a little more time. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to mount the brace bar assembly to the back of the tractor. This is all the stuff that's going to come with your tracks. You're going to get this brace bar. You're going to get some set of clamps. You're going to get some nuts and bolts, obviously. And you're going to get these, uh, what I call the, the vertical slide bars. And all this will make sense once we start getting it assembled. The first thing we're going to put on is the little brace bar for the back. And I'll talk a little about why this brace bar is here. Okay, so I could just slide these tracks into place, put the bolt in to lock it onto the axle, and go out and start doing something, like running a moldboard plow through the ground or whatever. But if these tracks don't have some kind of a location limiter system to keep them within a certain range of operation, then what happens is as soon as I put the tractor in a really hard pull, say I'm going along with the moldboard and I hit a rock with the plow, then the, the torque of that axle will find it easier to simply rotate the entire track assembly than to drive the machine. So this track, which is triangular shaped, starts to spin around. Well, the first thing it does is crush the muffler, and then it hits the cylinder, and you're kind of out of the motor at that point. So when you've got a track that's mounted to a single axle like this, unlike a bulldozer or something that has two sprockets actually attached to the frame. Here we've just got one axle point. You've got to have some kind of a location system that's very rigid and uh, not going to move. So that's what this thing is going to be once we get it all assembled. On the BCS tractors, this thing is engineered to slide in between this tow hitch. This is your tow hitch double clevis right here. This is going to go on top of the lower clevis and we've got this spacer that's going to take up the space between this piece and the upper clevis. This is very important because if you put this on the bottom, which could be done, and put the bolt and nut down through here, you would actually, as you tighten it, you would actually crush this clevis together and the thing would never stay tight. So we've come up with this system here. 
which takes up all the space very neatly. Got a washer on top, washer on the bottom. Thread this together. This is a, a, a 27 millimeter nut and bolt. Crank this down. Now we've got the front end of the engine, we've got the engine sitting in a little wooden pallet cradle here, which is kind of stabilizing the machine side to side. If you don't have that, this thing might actually fall over during this part of the operation because I'm going to put some side thrust on it here. So you can always block up your machine appropriately, but you can put blocks under each side uh, instead of just the one in the middle. But just a word to the wise there. So this thing is just kind of get it right in about the center of its movement. It can only move so far in either direction because it's locked in on either side of the hitch. But I just try to put it in the center and then tighten it down good. Okay. Good. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put those tracks on. Now the tracks you can see there's a collar that sticks off of one side of this thing. The other side does not have its protruding collar. But the collar has a hole in it, as you can see here, and actually through both sides, and that's going to line up with one of these holes here. The, the various holes in this allow you different width positions of the track, which is very handy, because in some cases you might want to have the whole machine narrowed down to get through a narrow opening. In other cases you might want it wide for maximum stability on a slope. Also, certain implements like your moldboard plows and rotary plows uh, are fussy about how wide the inside dimension are, that is the, uh, the space between one wheel or track and the other track. So to get the, the setting right for the rotary plow, you would just use a tape measure and set it appropriately. Uh, for what it's worth, the, the inside to inside measurements should be somewhere between 16 and 18 inches when using a rotary plow. So, roll this thing around so these holes are about lined up. I'm going to slide this down here. I'm going to go ahead and bring it in to about that middle position right there. Okay, that's a pretty wide stance, but that's okay. Get this bolt wiggled up through the hole. There we go. 17 millimeter fasteners will be needed there, so grab a couple of wrenches and tighten that down. No clearance for a ratchet here. Okay. Now we're going to install these clamps. This goes on here. These, let's see if I'm doing this right. I believe that's right. So, that's the intercom, but we're not getting it right now. So, this is going to slide down on here. This is going to slide in the side here. And this thing is going to go on this post on the bottom. And that's your location system, pretty much. And so, as the tractor moves forward and backward, I won't be able to do this with this thing still on the jack, but as this thing moves up and down, essentially this vertical bar is going to slide through this little eyelet, and it's going to, the, the travel of how far this thing can move is limited by where you put these bolts in, because these bolts just strike on the bottom and top of this flange. So I'm going to put them in, oh, I don't know, roughly about there, I think that'll work. We can test the, the throw once we get it all put together. You need a certain amount of movement because the tractor has to be able to tilt a certain amount to get the implement up and down onto the ground. So you can't just have one setting on this. So I'm going to put those on like that. There are some washers and cotter pins that go down there on the bottom. So we got here, they give you a total of eight washers, so it's going to be four for each side. These are the four that are going to go on this side. So I'm going to put two on the inside, put the brace bar on there, 
two on the outside and put the cotter pin through. Now this cotter pin's been used once already, so it's a little bit bent. But I think I can force it through there and grab a pliers. There we go. Bend the cotter pin down. Bend it up. Okay, now it's nice and secure. And then you want to arrange your brace bar, you know, depending on where your track is located, you want to arrange your brace bar so it's more or less vertical, not leaning at an angle like this or, you know, <laughs> that doesn't work. There we go. You don't want it leaning like that because the track will hit as it rotates. So just kind of nice straight up and down. Looks pretty good. And then I'll grab a 13 millimeter wrench which seems to have vanished, but we'll grab it. So a couple 13 millimeter wrenches for the clamping bolts here. You loosen up the jam nut, tighten the clamping bolt down to lock this clamp to this bar. Get it nice and tight and then lock the jam nut down to hold it in place. A little extra protection. So that side is mounted. And you would just repeat this procedure on the other side. Which we will do. Okay, I'm gonna rotate this around. Sometimes when these, when these steel tracks are new, there's a few burrs on these things from where they've cut, up, cut these things off. So it's not a bad idea to wear gloves, which I'm not doing. But feeling the effects of that as well. I caught a sharp edge there a second ago. So let's see, I'm in one, two, three, four, five. You want to make sure you're in the same hole, one, two, three, four, five. So I'm in that hole right there. Wherever that hole is, there we go. So if you wanted to change the width of your tracks at some point when you were working on it, say this was great for mowing on a slope, but now you want to narrow them up to use the rotary plow, all you would do is take out this bolt and nut on each side, slide it into the appropriate hole, and of course you'd make sure to loosen up this clamp here on the top so that this top bar could slide in with it. So we'd bring these into the appropriate hole, put the nut and bolt back in, and then you know make sure this is vertical and go ahead and tighten the clamps in place, and you're done. So changing the width is extremely easy. So, get these things going the right way. Here we'll check and see if we've got these in the right position. Two washers on the inside, two washers on the outside, and our cotter pin. These cotter pins are just generic. If yours goes bad after taking it on and off a few times, you can just pick them up at any hardware store. Nothing special, it's not a metric cotter pin or anything. So this is the amount of movement we've got on these tracks. 
probably a little excessive actually. I might lower these bolts a little bit because I probably want this bolt to bottom out before the engine actually hits the ground. So I'll, I'll lower that down a pole or two. But, uh, but you can see that the angle that's allowed on the back side is enough to get that implement into the ground nicely. And you've got all kinds of adjustment here. So, you know, depending on the implement you're using and the application you're using it for, you, you can put these things as close together or as far apart as you need to to give yourself the oscillation that you want. The important thing is that there are bolts above and below this brace because that keeps the track from rotating all the way around. Now, when you're using the track, uh, you'll find that the steering of the machine is almost exclusively with the independent steering brakes, which are located up here on your handlebars. On the Grillo, they're both on the same side here. But uh, with the steering brakes, this thing handles amazingly well. You just break one wheel and the thing just crawls around. It sounds like a, a tank. <laughs> and we're actually thinking of coming out with a howitzer attachment. No, I'm kidding. So that concludes this segment. Thanks.